Why hello there and welcome to another tank review. I'm Corny Swiss and today we're looking at the SU-100 rank 4 6.7 battle rating Russian tank destroyer. As with any review if you want to see something in particular uh, simulator battle, realistic battles, uh, whatever it's all down there in the description with timestamps so please uh, check those out watch what you want to watch you don't need to watch the whole thing if you don't want to. And uh, But if you want to stick around and hear the more garage egghead portion of this review Let's get started. So the SU-100 is a 6.7 battle rating uh, Russian tank destroyer. Now, where does that put it in the tree? It is the first rank 4 tank destroyer you get um, for the Soviets. Um, it's the last of the sort of low-profile tanks. After this, you have the ISUs and all of its variants. And to me, the SU-100 is sort of the pinnacle of the tank destroyer role. For German, for not Germans, for the Russians at this time. Um, I'm going to talk about the ISU in its own video. I'm still forming an opinion about it, but I like the SU-100 the best, and we're going to talk about why. But the tanks, it's generally sees on the battlefield, so let's look for everything with a 5.7 to a 7.7. Yag Panther, that's its counterpart, 6.7. Ferdinand. 7.0, Yag Tiger 8.0. So it'll see Ferdies, Yag Tigers, and basically that's it. And premium, premiums obviously. This is a 6.7, 6.7, 7.0, so you'll see that. Panthers and NATO. So you'll see from the Panther Alps D all the way to the Panther, Panther Alps F. And you'll see the Tiger 2, you'll see the Tiger all the way to the Tiger II H. So these are the tanks you'll kind of see is a Tiger Tiger 1, First Panther and Yag Panther down to the Ferdinand, the Fer, the the Panther F and the Tiger II H. So those are the, those are that's your competition in uh in this tank. And we're going to talk about the gun first because the, all that being said, the gun is primed for dealing with all those threats. This 100 millimeter gun, in my opinion, might be the best gun in the game. It's the gun I like the most. I love it on the T-54. I love it on the SU-100. The rate of fire is 14.8 rounds, of, or 14. the reload rate is 14.8 seconds. Stock, I think it's 16.3, I think. Yeah, it is. And um, that's a solid reload rate. That's a solid... Uh, rounds per minute and it's a hundred millimeter shells it's just it has everything i want it has punch and it has muzzle velocity let's look at the ammunition the ammunition you're going to want to be using is this br412d 887 uh, meters per second muzzle velocity 15.9 kilograms um, penetration 220 at 10 meters 140 at two at 2000 meters at 2,000 meters, you can still pen the front of a Tiger II's turret. That's what we're talking about with uh, this gun. The uh, weak spots, like maybe the lower plate of a Yag Tiger, perfectly, you can deal with them with this gun. At a uh, long range, less, well, I mean, less so at long range, depending on the sloping and whatever, but um, it can be done. The, this 100 millimeter gun is really, really good. It just wrecks everything it faces. And uh, that's what it's designed to do. And, you know, the, the, the SU-85 was a quick fix. This is the solution to Tigers and Panthers for Russian forces in, the war, in World War II. So the gun is really, really nice. Let's talk about the armor. The armor's an upgrade. 75 millimeters, 45 on the side and rear, but, you know, whatever about the side and rear. If you get hit in the side and the rear, you're toast. 75 at the front, though, is interesting. Notice how it's sloped. It's sloped back, and it's sloped pretty hard back. Angled like this, uh, I have bounced lots of different things. Not all the things, but most of the things. Um, this little track section here, these extra tracks count as spaced armor. I think the log does, too. And the log, I mean, the log makes it OP. Look at this. Log. No log. Unbalanced. The... Uh, these tracks, I think, kind of spaced armor, but obviously you have the driver's hatch. And this front armor, if, if you give someone a clean shot at this part of the hole, 
just on this side generally, they're probably going to knock you out. Even on here they can, but I've noticed that when people shoot me on this side of the hole, less happens to me. I think it's just because there's less... You look at the tank and there's really less on this line than there is over here. There's lots of things over There's lots of space for stuff over here. Less space for stuff over here. But angled kind of like that. Uh, this armor can be effective. It's not great though. It maybe will save you. Uh, it might get you that extra shot. But uh, you shouldn't be running around relying on your tank to bounce shots for you. I, I don't think that's reasonable. Um, so yeah, but this tank's armor is relatively light, which plays into the fact that it's 500 horsepower engine at 2,050 RPM, and it's a 31 ton, 31.6 ton machine, top speed 57 kilometers an hour. This thing can fly. This thing can run and get out on the flank and flank entire enemy pushes and everything. Uh, this tank can get to places that other tanks want to get to, but just can't, so you can be shooting... Like on Carpathians, you can be around the, around the corner on the big western hill where the little castle is, shooting them as they come up the hill. Like from the side. So that's really, really nice. Um, I said hill. It has 3 degrees gun depression. Not good. 20 degrees elevation. You know, whatever. It's fine. Um, gun depression will be an issue for you in this tank but you'll be used to it from playing other tanks like uh, other tank destroyers and uh, heavy tanks in particular but uh, the key is you want to get this tank in a position where you can just keep the gun firing and just lay waste because that's exactly what you're going to do with this gun uh, I think of the Russian tank destroyers I've already said it but I think this is my favorite and other than the SU-122P because of the 122 millimeter gun, which absolutely crushes everything. This 100 millimeter gun is really, really good. I would actually say it's equal to the. It's I think it's well, it's better than that gun in my opinion because it's a hard, it's a relatively high caliber and it has a faster rate of fire. So there you go. But uh, what to take away? Armor's not is added. It's not great. It's not that good. But you know what? The gun kind of makes up for everything. It's fast, and it has this really, really great gun. And, uh, yeah, you're, this is, and it also gets two spawns, so, like, what's there to complain about? Uh, this is a really, it's durable to a degree, and deadly to any degree. Um, you're going to, if you get this thing, if you're face-to-face -face with a panther or a tiger, any of the king tiger variants, you can shoot them in the face and knock them out. If you're, if you're angled like this, they may not do anything to you. Even if they're angled, you might still knock them out. But obviously, if you're in a face-to-face -face like this, it's whoever fires first. Um, their armor isn't enough for to withstand your gun. Your armor absolutely isn't enough to withstand their gun unless they shoot these tracks or shoot somewhere non-critical. So, yeah. So that's the sort of garage view. Quick over overview. Side, rear armor, bad. Front armor. It's okay. Gun, great. Speed, really, really good. What's there not to like? But uh, let's jump into the replays. So here's the simulator battle replay for the SU-100. Uh, we're driving around on Ash River, Ash Valley, whatever it is, the Ash one. Uh, I took the southern spawn, like, honestly, I do it a majority of the time. I do it just about every time, in fact. Uh, I need to expand my horizons and go to the north spawn sometimes. Usually I only end up there if that's where the fight takes me, but I don't know. Sometimes I need to explore that. But anyway, there's a T-44 ahead, and he's going to start uh, shooting things. Uh, my goal is kind of to let him go first in a way. I mean, um, I have a really potent gun, and I'd like to be able to use it. And uh, honestly, to some degree, his armor might be a little more effective than mine. So I'm just kind of looking around. There's no one here immediately. So I'm going to instead rush over here and try and... Uh, oops, just spotted someone. It is a tiger. And better aim shot. I might have done some more to him there. I, I, I hit the top of his tank, not the, uh, the face, which is where I wanted to shoot. But uh, my reload's kind of long. He is... I don't think his gun depression is enough to get down here. 
So I put a shot into him there. Commander, loader, gunner. And uh, damage is cannon breach. So uh, he's kind of not in a good way. And I see what he's doing here. And if I was a better shot, I would have punched his ticket right here. But actually, I need to rotate the whole tank. And uh, yeah. But I'm not going to end up getting the kill. The uh, T-44 is flanking around him. He's going to get the kill. I'll get a nice assist though for it. But um, you see what I mean? The if I if my first shot had been more better aimed, more better aimed, more had been well aimed, I think I would have knocked him out with the first shot. And the Tiger's a fairly durable tank, but not to a hundred millimeter gun. And T forty four, I think, would just lit him on fire, and there he goes. So one Tiger down. It's always important to. Uh, knock out the enemy's heavy tanks. But now I'm going to move over here and kind of use this ridge and try and uh, and try and uh, just kind of give uh, overwatch fire support to our buddies down here. See there, now I make a dumb mistake here. I The critical mistake is I went too far forward on the ridge. I should have backed up and done something else. And then here I keep going. I, sh I shouldn't have kept going. Because I get down this ditch, and then um, I'm not going to either miss or I hit him or whatever, but I'm not going to do anything good with that shot. And, uh, you know, and then I, now I'm engaged in a in this type of fight, which is fine. But I need to aim my shot when I get it better. That should have been the kill shot. But now he's going to get the next shot, so I need to, like, get up under him. And, uh, but his hull armor is facing downwards. I'm getting pushed up. Yeah, he's just going to do that all day. Uh, that range doesn't, doesn't need any help to penetrate. But that's, that's kind of what not to do in the SU-100. That's why, kind of why I wanted to include this replay. We're going to see the gun a little bit more later, but the critical thing to note is that this tank, it doesn't knife fight very well. And what I mean, what I mean by that is when you're up close and like pushing someone, it's you know the, this tank doesn't do all that well in my opinion. The uh, it's still it's obviously it doesn't have a turret. That's the main issue. With a turret, that does that's less of an issue. But the Panther has a turret, so he can always have the gun on me, and uh, he can ram me and knock my gun out of off you know like sort of away, so he, I can't shoot him. Um. So yeah, that was unfortunate. That was poor play by me, and uh, something what not to do. But um, so yeah, I'm just gonna rush back over here because uh, I'm kind of thinking, okay, well I can I can bag me a panther here, because I mean the fight's kind of pushed away from me. The T44 is sitting on the hill; he's basically covering their um, spawn, so I don't really need to check over there. Instead, I should be looking down here to uh, give some fire support to our our friends and there is a tank out over there so I'm gonna move to a better position to go uh, put shots on him and this is where I think this tank kind of excels is the like second line uh, fire sport it's a uh, I would say exceptional at that it um, it really can uh, just deliver the boom from uh, from range and knocking out that panther helps out the teammates, so that's always good. But uh, that's kind of the capabilities of this gun. You know, not a great game, but I wanted to include it mainly because to show that, um, kind of show the limitation of this tank. Um, the gun is incredible, but you have to be in a situation where the, you can use the gun. And kind of, and like, you know, on the A corner of jungle, that's maybe not the best. That's for tanks with more armor. Instead, you should be maybe back a few hundred meters, like in the, on the other side of the bridge, in the uh, like little forested area, so where it's hard to see, where you can uh, put shots on enemies from there. That's probably the better idea. But now we're just we're just kind of cleaning up now. That guy's been annihilated. <laughs> He's pop turret pops like a cork. This guy, I don't know what he was doing, but um. First shot knocked out his uh, gunner, I think. Something. Something to the point where I could do this. Just come around behind him. 
put a shot into his ass, knock him out. From behind, a panther will never survive. Oh, knocked over that thing. I'm going to take a quick detour and say I really like the tree physics <laughs> that they've implemented. But anyway, so that's a simulator battle replay. Sort of a bummer, but I want to include it to show you what not to do. Uh, it's very much so a do as I say, not as I do moment. So let's move on to the next replay. Alright, so I wanted to include part of this replay. Uh, I'm sorry that the sound is muted. Um, I had my recording settings all messed up when I got this, but this is a clip I think it's important to show. So I saw these enemy tanks flanking our position, and this is where the SU-100 really excels. Uh, the rate of fire allows me to take out the King Tiger, reload, and then be able to take out two more tanks in addition to the King Tiger. Because there was like a few tanks pushing around this corner and uh the our allies who are over here like they don't i basically always get the first shot in this scenario i'm sorry it was a tiger it was a another king tiger but that that panther now knows where i am but my rate of fire is good enough in the fact that the time it took him to uh like uh what's it called like you know calling the artery already on me that he did i was able to refinish reloading and put a shot into him and uh, knock him out. So, sorry it was muted, but uh, we're going to move on to the next replay now. Alright, so I'm including a portion of this replay. This one I didn't have to mute the sound for, which is nice. Um, I don't think you want to hear just staticky background for the whole replay. That's just not that good. Um, but I felt like that previous clip was something you should see. Um, so here we are on Carpathians. Realistic battle. And... Um, here, here's the, I'm going to come out and tell you the annoying thing about this battle for me. I get knocked out twice. I'm only going to show you the uh, the first, I don't know, life, I guess, because the second one wasn't that interesting. But, um, and this, this one kind of illustrates what I'm talking about with this tank and being fast. Um, yeah, but just spoiler, I get bombed to hell. Um, what I was talking about in the garage review was that this tank's fast enough to the point where you can get out on the flank and get around the enemy and beat them to the maybe to a position they want to be in. In, uh, in this situation I stopped to shoot this AI because honestly AI are really really annoying um, especially when they're just pounding you and you can't tell when um, when a player's shooting at you and when it's an AI. I mean you can if you can see the tracers and stuff but the um, it's just annoying just getting pounded like that so I'm over here on the western flank um, based on the fact that I don't see anyone yet I'm kind of I'm kind of assuming that none of them have really swung out this far so now I'm gonna kind of push back in towards the cap I imagine that they're all kind of centralized on the cap I mean that's where I would be in uh, this situation is I'd be trying to take the cap Especially since we're capping, so there's kind of a, a timer. But here you're also going to see kind of what I'm talking about with the gun depression. That's a very gentle rise right ahead of us in between these trees. And it's going to be an issue for me to get the gun down onto the first AI I decide to shoot. I think, do I shoot the AI first? Do I go for... No, nope, I go for this uh, Yag Panther first. This is kind of what this tank's designed for. I'm here, and they haven't seen me yet. For some reason, I shoot the AI. Why would I shoot the AI? Shoot the Yak Panther, you fool. But you saw what I mean there. I couldn't get the gun down on him. But now I think I'm going to make the sensible decision and go try and shoot the Yak Panther, who's completely side along to me. Right over there. Yep, right in between those trees. Right there, buddy. There you go. This is what this tank's designed for, to get out on the flank and just pound people from the flank. Um, I'm here and I'm here really before they can feasibly get here. Like here we go, this gun depression, I'm on a slight slope and I only can shoot his turret and I, I do a lot of damage to the AI but AI very strong, yes? Uh, no, no kill with uh, player gun, no no. So. Uh, I probably spend too much time fussing around with this AI, but the issue I have with the uh, okay, so this uh, Tiger Two, always shoot him in the turret. Um, 
right there he was turning his turret it would have been better to wait for him to turn the turret he just fired so I know I'm safe and um, it'd be better to wait for him to turn the turret towards me and then shoot him straight in front of the turret this gun has plenty of penetration for the front of Tiger 2 turrets uh, both variants so it'd be better for me to just shoot the, the face of his turret maybe even hit the lower part which is like a shell trap where it uh, bounces the shell into the hull of the tank and uh, try and knock him out that way and I bet you I would have but um, you know I wasn't I didn't play it optimally there you know so whatever I'm gonna finally knock out this freaking AI you know just oh my god these these things were just kept shooting you and I mean when you're in this situation I, I'm sure you can understand uh, frustrations with these little these little buggers but gonna finally put them out of their misery and incoming are a bunch of bombs to uh, try and blow me up. Good thing I didn't go forward. But uh, that guy's going to kind of be... A, he's going to be the uh, nail in my coffin. I shouldn't have sat here. I should have gone up, tried to get in with all of his tanks. But, you know, I saw a juicy, t juicy target and backed up. Probably not the best idea. But uh, I'm going to get bombed. And that's going to kind of be the end of this replay. So, uh... Yeah, let's move on to the next one. Alright, so here we go on a realistic battle on Kursk. Um, this will be the last replay in the review. But uh, I kind of want to just have a replay that shows you the speed. Uh, we're going like 56, 57 kilometers an hour right here. We're going full speed up this slight slope and uh, rushing out on the flank of Kursk to take a position and shoot uh, the Germans as they... Well, the goal here is I'm going to rush out on top of this hill, push down to their side of the hill, and then shoot them as they try and climb up the hill, or if no one is, shoot across the, to them on the uh, the other side of the cap. But no one's going to come up and challenge me, and uh, you're going to see some poor shooting, you're going to see some nice shooting, uh, you're going to see some debatable shooting, but you're going to see it all here on Kursk. Um, the tree physics are cool, but that's just kind of weird how the uh, how that tree behaved right there. Don't know how I feel about it. Feel good, but I don't know how good. But uh, so first things first, gonna shoot some AI. Uh, it's never a bad idea. Helps you get the range. Uh, I haven't played Kursk in a while, so uh, it's good to kind of get reacquainted with what a what a I don't know how far is that, 1400 meter or so target looks like. So that one was a little short I think. I changed my mind. I said screw it, I'm not going to shoot that one. I'm going to shoot the one that's way closer. Fair enough. Might have been better to shoot that one out there. But you know, whatever. Solid hit. Aim a little bit higher or don't change it at all honestly because the uh, only at this range you start really seeing the um, I guess the randomness of the guns. I remember when uh, ground forces first came out, it felt like everything was a laser pointer. Like if you pointed the gun there, that's exactly where the shell goes. Um, none of that you know dispersion circle business, but um, it's not the case. Uh, shells can go long, they can go far, they can go left, they can go right. So, something to keep in mind. Hold on, I was, I was figuring out what I was shooting here. It's a, either an AI or a player, but either way it was short. The lead was good, but the uh, shell itself was short. So I guess the lead wasn't good, because if I, flung, if I shot it farther, I wouldn't have gotten there at the same time. There's a tank destroyer running around over there. That is, I believe, a Ferdinand, if memory serves correctly. Let's make sure. Yes, that is a Ferdinand. Oh no, is it? It might be. It might be a Ferdinand. But uh, this gun is perfectly adequate for ranges. Uh, obviously German guns are probably a little better. But um, you have the penetration, you have the punch, you have the power to deal with uh, German armor from range. I mean, this is basically the T-54's gun. Or t yeah, T-54. It's basically its gun. And no one can complain about the T-54's gun. 
It's not allowed. But now I'm out here on this ridge, and I'm kind of surveying their, uh, I guess, what the uh, what the deal is. Take a sneaky shot at AI, light him on fire, you know, he's going to burn down. And uh, I'm kind of just looking for players. Um, AI are nice, and you need to knock them out to win, but players are better. Players are more fun to knock out. Give you more points. Oh, and points, points get you new tanks, and new tanks are more fun. I'm really excited for 1.43, by the way. That should be fun. New tanks, be good. But there, there's a tank right there that's spotted. What is that? SPG. That's the guy we were, we saw earlier running across. Checking my flank. Something you really need to get a habit of doing um, in realistic and simulator, specifically in simulator, but alright, I'm not going to lie, this shot was, I think, pretty good. Maybe not this shot, but one of these shots here. We have a Ferdy on the move. He's going to go behind the smoke, and I just guess. I'm like, that's where he is. Lo and behold, there he was. So that's a Ferdinand knocked out at, I don't know, I'd, I'd have to go back and look exactly how far, but that was a pretty good shot. That was a shell guided by Joseph Stalin himself. But uh, now we're... We're kind of cleaning up. Uh, they're back in their spawn. There's a Yak Panther over there. He's just chilling, and soon something unfortunate is going to happen. I think I'm going to get hit. I'm going to get hit. I don't know by what. It might be the Yak Panther. And my reload is going to be. My reload speed is going to be doubled. That was short. That was a poor shot. But now the artillery, the based artillery, are opening up on me, and that's actually a problem. I have been knocked out. And I'm not the only one who's been knocked out by those uh, sneaky little bastards. The artillery are fairly strong. They are little anti-tank guns. And if you're not careful and you show them too much of your side or your rear, they will knock you out. Oh my god. I wish I would have... I wish I would have aimed just a little bit higher right here. Goes into his suspension. Tiny bit higher. That knocks him out. Now he's turned towards me. He's definitely seen me. Undoubtedly. And I think that's the shot that uh, kind of cooked my ability to uh, return fire very quickly. But, um, you know, just repairing. It is annoying, but I understand why. That the uh, your gun has to be reloaded after it's knocked out. Makes sense. But it is incredibly annoying because you could have things like on the KV-2. I think it happened to me during the review actually one or multiple it happened to me multiple times where they'll knock my gun out i just fired they knock they damage my gun i go to repair it's like a 10 second repair so i spend 15 seconds or so doing the repair because you know you count down from five or whatever to start the repair and then you do 10 seconds of repair and my gun would be loaded i basically got a reload in half the amount of time so they come around the corner you know they're all loaded and bam i just blast them away but uh, that doesn't happen anymore if your gunner gets knocked out it's okay, but um, that guy actually got knocked out just as I sent the shell, but I'm pretty sure it would have been short. So, and we're kind of in the cleanup stage here. We're, um, we're winning pretty handily. They, uh, they don't have a hell of a lot to fight us with. Bold life decision by this uh, 5A. He's, who is he charging? Is he charging the T-44 or does he know where he's going? I feel like he might have seen me. I'm kind of looking at him like, what are you doing? Send the shell. Undamaged. I think I hit the very top of his tank or something. Undamaged is not something you're going to see a lot of with this tank. Or with this gun in particular. Uh, most of the time when you hit something, you're going to do damage. The, uh, I guess the, uh, but I mean, it's just like any gun, I think, when you, if you hit the top of the tank or the very side of the turret, you know, just kind of scrape them in any which way, yeah, you're not going to penetrate, you're not going to do, you know, tons of, uh, tons of damage to the tank, but, so that's, uh, this replay, so let's move on to the opinion. Alright, so opinion time, what do I think of the SC-100? I think it's kind of overpowered. Um, 
I can understand people saying that the hitbox might be messed up. Because uh, sometimes you just shoot these things and you're like, no way 75 millimeters just bounce that. But proper angling, I can understand it. After driving it more exclusively and really getting a feel for it. And the gun is just so deadly. I mean, this tank, honestly, forget the armor to some degree. This gun, this this tank's about the gun. It's a lot like the German tanks. The German tanks maybe have, lack a little armor here and there. And it's all about their guns, those long 88s that just crush at range. This thing is a really, really good gun. This uh, D10S, really, really good. It's, I mean, it's the T-54's gun, basically. And you get it at a at 1.3 battle rating lower. Versus an 8 versus a 6.7. And this gets two spawns. So it's like having a big... It's it's just... I mean, it's higher caliber than the German guns. And it, it can be just as effective at range. So, in my opinion, this is sort of the pinnacle of Russian tank destroyers in the game. I don't really like the ISU variants. Um... I don't, they don't really bring anything new to the table. Their armor is less sloped, even though it is thicker, but it's not thick enough. It, they, they don't. It's like, you know, the Ferdinand's a big old machine, the Jagdtiger's a big old machine, but you know what? Their armor is really, really thick to in places. You know, their lower plates are weak, but if you cover that, the tank is perfectly safe. With uh, the ISUs the gun is placed so low that they can, you can actually be shot and knocked out when you can't even return fire. The uh, the armor just isn't good enough. I think this tank has adequate armor from the front with angling, and the gun is extremely effective. The rate of fire makes it is what makes this gun super effective in addition to the caliber, whereas the ISUs don't have that. So, um, yeah. I mean, this tank's fast, it's basically a medium with a jacked up gun and uh, well obviously no turret but you know you beggars can't be if, if this thing had a turret it would just be a T-54 and it would be broken and overpowered it's already kind of overpowered um, it kind of brings back that age old argument of you're telling me that the Yag Panther, which is 6.7 battle rating has a smaller gun uh, is slower slightly slower is um only gets one spawn but it's but it's equivalent on the russian side gets two and it has a higher caliber gun this tank is heavier but it's it's armor isn't that much better it's 10 millimeters better on the front five less on both on the sides and rear so if anything the armor is the same this is just a larger machine so I don't know. I don't think you can argue that this shouldn't have two spawns, and the SU-100 does. Um, but, I mean, get it while it lasts. I mean, this is a really, really good tank destroyer, and there's a reason you see a lot of people play it. You see a, you see a lot of T-44s, and you see a lot of SU-100s, and there's a reason. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed the review. hope you learned something. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, put them in the description. If you've really enjoyed and you want to stick around, uh, go and hit the subscribe button. helps out. And, uh, yeah, I'm more than happy to answer questions. If I don't know the answer to the question you're asking, maybe someone else does, I'll research and do what I can to either refer you to someone who knows the answer or a place where you can get the answer, or I'll do the research and come up with the answer myself and um, let you know. But, uh, yeah. So I hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. I'm in Corny Swiss. See you next time.